the pakistani economy there would be no point in talking about any of this if pakistan were in fact the hopeless economic and administrative basket case that it is so often made out to be this is not the situation however pakistan has never followed the asian tigers in radically successful modern development and shows no signs of doing so but for most of the time since 1947 its rates of growth have been substantially higher than india's pakistan would be a far more developed and prosperous state today but for the economic disaster of zulfikar ali bhutto's nationalization programs of 1970s which led to a steep drop in the growth After another period of economic stagnation in the 1990s worsened by US sanctions imposed on a punishment for Pakistan's nuclear program under the Musharraf's administration from 1999 to 2008 economic growth returned to a rate of between 6.6 and 9% a year before dropping again as a result of global economic recession certainly most people in Pakistan are poor but all the same as a result of this economic growth together with the effects of islamic charity and the circulation of state patronage to the kin folk and followers of successful politician pakistan lacks the huge concentrations of absolute poverty to be found in india cities and countryside in fact the absolutely poor and defenseless people in pakistan are often the same as in india the descendants of the old untouchable castes seeing nothing for them in india remain in pakistan at partition but have never escaped their traditional poverty and marginalization there are however far fewer of them in pakistan from this point of view as so many other pakistan has a rather medieval look. the state is very bad at providing modern services such as clean water medicine public transport and education because it is too weak either to force much of the population to pay taxes or to control corruption on part of its own officials in part as a result of the lack of education ordinary people are also very bad at organizing themselves to demand or create such services certain groups are outside the system altogether and have no access to protection patronage or charity on the other hand the system does ensure that the great majority of population does at least have enough to eat and where the state decides that a particular development project is of great national importance it can in fact partially isolate it from the corruption of the rest of the system and ensure that it is built successfully this was true of the vast extension of dams and irrigations in 1950s and recent years the construction of the port of gawadar and fine motorways linking the great cities of northern pakistan Pakistan's GDP as of 2009 stood at 167 billion dollars making it the 48th largest economy in the world 27th if adjusted for purchasing power despite the image of Pakistan as an overwhelmingly rural society and the dominance of political social and cultural patterns drawn from the countryside agriculture Agriculture as of 2009 accounted for only about 20% of the GDP. The service sector accounted for 53%. Most of it, most of it in informal, very small scale businesses, very small scale businesses and transport with industry at 26%. However, around 60% of the population continued to live in the countryside, helping to explain the continued power of the rural elites. Most of the Pakistani industry is made up of textiles and food processing. In 2000 in 2007 to 2008, Pakistani exports stood at 18 billion dollars, the majority of them textiles. Pakistan also contains certain islands of high technology above all the nuclear industry, which whatever you may think of about its strategic implications is a very remarkable achievement for a country with Pakistan's economic profile and shows that Pakistani state can achieve if it if it really sets its mind to it. and can mobilize enough educated honest and committed people it is miserably clear however that as with other south asian countries the greater part of pakistan economy has not made the breakthrough to modern development and seems nowhere near doing so as of 2009 gdp per head stood at a mere 1250 dollars before adjustment for purchasing power between 1960 and 2005 Per capita income as a proportion of that of the USA actually fell from 3.37 to 1.71%. Some 23% of the population live below the poverty line. Underlying this lack of development is illiteracy rate, which in 2010 stood at only 55.9%. Above all because of the complete absence of education for women in much of the countryside.